Just last month, if you asked Freddie Freeman or his wife what Guillain-Barre syndrome was, they would have told you they had no idea. Today, they know it's the neurological disease that nearly rocked their family. While Freeman was at All-Star Weekend in July, his three-year-old son Maximus got sick. Within days, he was unable to sit up or walk or eat or drink. He lost feeling in his body and had trouble breathing, necessitating a ventilator. The Freemans were with him bedside for hours. And finally on Sunday, the harrowing ordeal was over as their son was discharged from the hospital. Now, Freddie said Maximus is a strong name. Max Strong, as his teammates now say, leaving his father in tears, recalling the hardest moment of all. By 7.30, he was completely ventilated, feeding tubes um, and everything. So I walked in about... 10 o'clock, um, it's hard. I think a lot of us are parents in here. Just seeing one of your kids on a ventilator, just fighting. It was hard. Um, thankfully, um, we haven't announced it. We were at Chalk Hospital uh, in Orange County. Um, absolutely incredible team of doctors. Um, I, I can't, there's just, just no words to thank Dr. Knight and his staff at, in the PICU unit. The nurses day and night, absolutely incredible. Uh, the respiratory therapists, neurology, um, Every department, I can't. I mean, I'm here nine days after, and um, it feels like a miracle. It really does. So I can't thank them enough. Wow. So discharged on Sunday, as he said, nine, ten days later, he's back on Monday. And listen to the reception from the fans in Los Angeles prior to his first at bat. First baseman, number five, Freddie Freeman. What an amazing moment to step there into that box, take a deep breath, and then try to concentrate on something as simple as baseball. Freeman struck out in his first appearance back again, though gone for nine or ten days. In the third, all of his teammates were wearing those Max Strong t-shirts, including Teoscar Hernandez, the home run derby champion, proving it's not just an Arlington thing. He can hit him in every stadium. Next at bat for Freeman, there you go. Base hit, and just to show, there are opponents, and then there are friends and rivals getting the biggest hug there at first from Bryce Harper. Great stuff. We'll keep you up to date. Oh, goodness! That ball had a family! Dale Cruz can fly! Dale Cruz! Stay! Oh, he's saying he can't throw that. He ain't got no one like that. No, he don't! Oh, he does, though. Who is that with that rocket? Kelly Dale Cruz. Oh, Lord. Who is the most exciting player in baseball? <laughs> That's part of the swag. He said that in the Sunday on Sports Center. You might have heard it this weekend. And Mikey backed it up on a Monday. Top one. That's gone. 19th of the year. Otani might be the best, but the adjective Jeff chose, exciting. It's hard to argue, Mike. It's anybody but this guy. I mean, he's right there in front of your face. <laughs> As he said to Jeff, top three. De La Cruz, this is what makes this guy great. Now, obviously, you're going to get some help from one of baseball's worst teams. The fact that on this basically shallow ground ball, uh, aided by two errors, <laughs> he ends up on third base. That's the Marlins season in a nutshell, and that is the excitement of Ellie in a nutshell. In the eighth, here we go again. Mike hit a four-hit night. All four were extra base hits, and neither of those homers was even the best homer in this game. Later in Sports Center, you're going to see the longest blast of the baseball season. Ellie and the Reds blasting off as they roll. Fewest games to get into the vaunted 2050 club. He's right there with Eric Davis, Ricky Henderson, 
Acuna. Wow, again, every base hit on Monday went for extras. Definitely exciting enough. All right, so the Diamondbacks and the Guardians going at it Monday. Logan Allen, your starting pitcher for Cleveland. If that sounds familiar, go back to April 28, 2021. A different Logan Allen started for Cleveland. He's now with the Diamondbacks. So we come back to Monday. First pitch of the game, Cattell Marte says, y'all better back up, suckers. I'm feeling good today. Launches that solo shot off Allen for a 1-0 lead. Very next batter, Gabriel Marino. Yo, can I get a taste? Yes, you can. Back-to-back -back home runs gives the Diamondbacks a 2-0 lead. So we wound up the Wayback Machine because somebody remembered back in 2021 that other Logan Allen facing the Twins, first at bat of the game, Byron Buxton, that's a home run. So the very next batter for the Twins in that game three years ago, Josh Donaldson, he hits a home run. The last two pitchers, Zubin, for Cleveland to allow back-to-back -back home runs to start a game, both named Logan Allen. <laughs> Baseball is weird. All right, let's bring it back to Monday. Top of the eighth, Diamondbacks down 5-4. Jock Peterson, he hit that go-ahead home run in the seventh inning Sunday against Pittsburgh. Thank you, sir. May I have another? First Diamondbacks player to hit a go-ahead home run in the seventh inning or later in consecutive games since Paul Goldschmidt 11 years ago. Diamondbacks lead at 6-5. Guardians, though, would tie the game on a sack fly. We go to extras. Bottom of the 10th. Cleveland down 7-6. Justin Martinez strikes out David Fry. There's your ball game. Diamondbacks win it in extras 7-6. All right, time now for another edition of Haven't Seen It Should. Zubin sort of teased a little bit earlier when he showed you this highlight between the Reds and the Marlins. Mm. This is Jesus Sanchez. The game is pretty much not in doubt, <laughs> but it was in doubt where that home run is going to actually end up. 480 feet. That's the longest home run in baseball this season. This is the 13th home run that Sanchez has hit. I mean, that is up there. You know it's up there when it's past the fans that are actually in the building. Now, on the season, four players have hit home runs 475 feet or longer. Shohei Otani, he was the first 476 in Colorado back on June 18th, fourth longest of 2024. Mm. Third longest, Aaron Judge, 477. That was August 2nd. One of six career long balls against Kevin Gosman for Judge. Coors Field once again involved July 21st, Jorge Soler, place for the Giants, or at least did at the time. 478, which that had been the longest until tonight. And again, your new leader, Jesus Sanchez, who joins Giancarlo Stanton as the only Marlins with multiple 480-foot home runs since distances were first tracked in 2006. Is somebody going to get the 500 feet this season? That's what I want to know. We'll see.